Hello folks, hope you're all doing well. We are somewhere a little bit different today. We are down at the bottom of the garden and to be honest, it's a little bit of a mess, but we've got a plan. There's a bit of a project going on here to sort of transform it, to change it. I'm gonna take you along on that journey with me. So to give you a little bit of context, up over there, behind the camera, the bit you can't see, the bit you probably won't be able to see, is the garden. That's the main bit of the garden, but we're very, very lucky to have this bit of extra garden down here but it's a bit of a mess. We've, we've been in the house that we've got now for a few years and nothing much has been done with this part of the garden, apart from me putting a greenhouse in. As you can see there, and you'll have seen that in other videos where I've been in the greenhouse doing bits and pieces, but the camera is usually positioned so you can't see the mess that, that is the rest of the garden. But alas, it is time to get it transformed and I've been working on it and it's gonna take a while. This isn't gonna be one of those magic videos where I go click and then everything is transformed and looks wonderful. I am slowly changing it and I need a bit of advice from you on a couple of things I'm going to do in here. Plus we'll head in the greenhouse at the end there and I'm going to show you the chilli plants. They didn't look too healthy earlier on in the year but we'll have a look at them and see how they're coming along now. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change it around a little bit. We'll get set up over here and we'll talk about what's going on in this area and how I'm going to do these different bits and pieces over here. So first off, two new beds we've put in here we've gone for green to match the greenhouse so it looks all right these are from a company called out sunny you buy these on amazon they're pretty much about the cheapest metal raised beds you get they're pretty good the metal's pretty thin they're a bit flimsy until you fill them up and i fill up now and a big thanks to danny from the grow up channel who recommended these to us and i think they look smashed and look great this one has been filled this one hasn't been filled but you can get a bit of an idea of how i'm doing it kind of sort of bodged up hugel culture sort of thing the cardboard's down we've got the sticks the twigs the logs the stuff in there wood chips leaves topsoil compost as we top this one up so we need to get some things to go in there and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna pop in the greenhouse while i've got you there and hopefully hopefully you can still kind of see me and still hear me and we've got a couple of different things that are gonna go in these beds but first of all let me just close this door to keep the heat in there We've got some onions, some onions, onions going from sets. Now I bought a big sort of deal of bulbs from, it was like Sutton's or somewhere like that earlier in the year. And it came with onion sets as well. And these are called Snowball, never done them before. And I thought, why not? Why not get them, set them off, stick them in here. We use loads of onions and cooking and stuff like that. So we might as well get them on the go. These have only been on the go, look at them. They've only been on the go probably a week, 10 days maybe in the greenhouse. And they are absolutely, flying and you can see on the bottom there look at the roots coming out there so they are ready to go out so i'm going to stick my knee pads on we'll get these planted out and i've got some other things to go in these as well so most of the onions i'm doing this year are from seed you'll see in earlier videos where they've got them on the go we'll come to that in the greenhouse in a little bit but you know i've got some sets why not use them like i say they came as part of a the sets came as part of a set so there we go and that they're looking smashing to be fair and honestly they couldn't, they couldn't be simpler to put in one of these one of these beds. Like I say, this is a sort of mix on the top here of compost and topsoil. And I'm just going to put a little bit of blood, fish and bone in the bottom of that hole. Hopefully, you know, by the time they sort of root properly and get down there, those that sort of wood chip layer down, a little bit lower down, is going to have broken down a little bit and they're going to sort of feed on those wood chips. And that's it, there you go, there's one in. I've only got about another, I don't know, how many is here? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, 40. I've only got another 40 of these to do. Whether all, all 40 of them fit in this bed, I'd be surprised if I get 40 of them to fit in this bed. We'll see. But the beds, I can't, I can't remember if I mentioned the dimensions before, but these are the 1.2 metres squared, so 1.2 metres that way, 1.2 metres that way. So it's quite a quite a big space it certainly feels the feel bigger than the pallet colors that I use up the uh, up of the allotment I mean there I'm sure the pallet colors are 1.2 long but they're not as not as wide so it feels much bigger which is strange because there's only 20 centimeters bigger or something like that 40 centimeters maybe I can't remember but yeah it feels much bigger so we'll get this planted out the other thing I'm going to do at the end here is put a cover on it because we do have a cat and the cat will come out and it will love this big bed, but I love the cat to bits. So we'll just pop a, pop a cover on the top and then that's sorted. Also in these big trees that we've got down the bottom here, there's plenty of pigeons and pigeons love 
little onion sets and little things that just poke up like this because they look like worms and they come along and they'll peck them they'll not really damage them but they'll they'll lift them up out the ground and they'll spread them all about over the over the bed and they'll get bored of them they'll realize they're not worms and they'll fly away but then there's a big old mess i've got to come along and clear up which i don't really fancy doing so we'll put a cover on this bed over here that's going to be filled up i'm going up to the allotment on wednesday possibly this week there'll maybe be a video wednesday night so watch out for that coming where I'll get the wood chips from to fill up the bottom sort of layers of this. I've got a couple of bags of compost, we've got some topsoil, we'll get all that mixed up, get that filled up. I've got some shallots and I've got some lettuces to go in there. Might film it, might not, we'll see how it goes. But that's what's going to go in that bed. Again, stuff, because this is right at the very bottom of the garden, round the corner, hidden away, it's stuff that I want on a hand. So I want salad crops in there, like the lettuces. I may put some spring onions or something in there as well, actually. That's, Good idea, spring onions, that's, that's what's going to fill the gaps in there. Lettuces, shallots, spring onions, things that I want to hand when I'm making the dinner, making lunch, whatever, I can just come down, pick some salad, make a lovely lunch, job done. Anyway, I'm going to finish this off, come back to you, show how it looks. We'll have a little bit of a look around because I need your advice on something for, for this part of the garden going up here. We'll see how it looks and then we'll head inside the greenhouse because it's starting to rain. So we're in the greenhouse a little bit earlier than, than envisaged because it started raining, which just appears to be part of the course around here at the moment. It rains, it stops, it rains, it absolutely hammers it down. Just as I was finishing off filming there, when I said it was raining, it actually turned into hailstones. Thankfully, it has now changed back to rain, but we're going to hide out in here for a little bit. We'll have a look around at what's going on. I mentioned spring onions to go in that bed. Look at these boots now. We're just these, these were grown, a bit of an experiment. They were put in this pot to try and grow them on a bit more. They're probably, I don't know if I can get that out. They're probably a bit root bound. They're not too bad, actually, looking at them. Let me get nice and close for you. They're not too bad, but they're coming a bit, they're a bit tall for the greenhouse and it gets condensation on the inside and I don't want them leaning against the window. So I think they'll go out into that bed there and they'll, they'll come on leaps and bounds. Onions, mixed mix bag with the onions. These are the Red Barons. They're looking brilliant. I think when I go up to the, the allotment on Wednesday, they're going to get planted out. But some of the, the, the Rinsberger ones, now I have just moved these on. Look at them. They're pathetic, aren't they? Look at the size of them. They're tiny. I don't know if it's been too cold in here for them or, or what. I don't know. But they're looking pretty rubbish. And these are the Bedfordshire Champion. They're kind of in the middle of both of them. They've come along fine. They were, they were sown a lot later than these two. But the Rinsberger ones, I'm a little bit worried about them. They're not looking good at this time of year, but we'll see. We've got plenty of Red Baron. We've got plenty of Bedfordshire Champion. And we've got those Snowball ones we've put out there. And we've got the Century ones that are up the allotment already that have been out over the winter. We've got the, the Sweet Peas, speaking of things that are going to the allotment of Wednesday. Look at these, look at the Sweet Peas. They're a bit of a tangled mess. They need pinched out, they need sorted out. We'll come to that, they'll get done. We've got Cole Rabbies. A little cold rabbits, they'll probably come up and go out as well. They're looking smashing, they are ready to go out. I've been sowing loads of seeds over this side, you probably can't see them very well. We've got, actually got two different types of cauliflowers. These slugs have been loving the cauliflowers, they're attracted to them. I keep getting rid of them, they keep getting evicted, they keep coming in. They love the cauliflowers, they don't seem to touch anything else. I had a bit of a go at the sweet peas, didn't really find them too interesting, but Cauliflowers, they love the cauliflowers. Got beetroots, got all sorts of stuff on the go. But chilies, remember those sad looking little chilies? I was a bit worried about them. They looked awful, they looked terrible. I tried to figure out what was wrong with them. It turned out to be the temperature. They were a little bit too cold where they were in the house. Put them on, sorted them out, gave them some TLC. Now look at them, look at these. These are marvelous. They're looking absolutely brilliant but why have i brought them down to the greenhouse these are still still in the house at the moment by the way i've only brought them down here to do a quick job still in the house still under the lights next week the the sort of weather does look like it gets better in terms of sunshine and cloud but as always at this time of year if there's no cloud cover during the day and it's nice and sunny we don't have clouds at night temperatures drop right down i've seen it forecast down to about three degrees ish which you know it's not quite frost but it's near frost so these are in no danger of going out anywhere yet but what they are doing is flowering i don't know if you can see there here's one here you've got little flowers here that are starting to grow on them now it's too early for the flowers the plants are going to be putting loads of energy 
into the flowers and I don't want them to do that. So I'm just gonna nip off and I've got these little, who remembers these from last year, these little snips. Now I could just pinch them out with my fingers, but I love, I love using these little snips. And we're just gonna take them off and I'm just gonna go through all these flowers. They'll just get chucked in the compost bin, but I'm just gonna take them off. Cause like I say, I don't want the plant putting its energy into growing those flowers when really I want it to be putting the energy into creating good roots and growing the plant itself and getting the leaves on the go. But that's that variety there, that one is the Sugar Rush Stripey. That's probably the biggest, the tallest, but the rest of them, here's another one. This is in a slightly smaller pot. That's another Sugar Rush Stripey. Just to show you the difference the pot can make, obviously this has got access to more compost. It's at least probably two to three inches taller. So, you know, given it more compost, this will need potting on into a bigger pot. Got some of the other ones here. Which one is this one? Again, it's not quite as big. This is Havana Gold, but sometimes the hotter ones take a longer to grow than the ones that aren't quite so hot. But everything's looking pretty good. And what's this one here? This is Jigsaw Brain. This is the super hot. Looking good, not quite flowering yet. It's only really the sugar or stripey that are flowering, but yeah, gonna nip the rest of those flowers off, get them sorted, get them back in the house, probably at least, I reckon, a month before they go back out. Now, the rain has stopped. I'm gonna head back out, we'll have a look around, we'll talk about some plans, and I'll get some advice from you guys out there. So, that's today's jobs finished, but let's, let's take a look down here, in the, down at the bottom of the garden, and see how things are looking. I'll just spin you around there. So this is it, we're under the, the arbor that sort of sits at the, the bottom of the garden that leads us into this bit here. Here's the two beds I was talking about, the metal beds. As with everything, I'll put a link in the description down below to Amazon. You can go and have a look, see what they look like. This one's a work in progress. Hopefully, I reckon by the end of the week, I'll have this one done and planted it up as well. Here's the one I've just been doing. You can see the little onion sets in there. We've got a cane in each corner. I am gonna put something on the top of these, a handy hint. Put something on top, because you don't want to poke your eyes out. And then the cover will go on top and it also stops the canes from poking through the covers as well. As for the rest of it, this little bit of sort of patio here, this bed's all rotten through, that's going to go to the dump. We've got some patio cleaner here. It says on the bottle, honestly, I've had, I've had this for weeks, and it says on the bottle, give it eight hours to dry, so the eight hours of sunshine. Now, I can't remember when the last time was that we had eight hours of sunshine. So I'm gonna risk it, I'm gonna risk it today. Let's have a look at the at the sky. It's not looking too bad at the moment, but I'm gonna put it down. It's gonna kill off all this moss, all the green, all the algae, and then I'll jet wash all this, and it'll look absolutely magic. And a bit over there, behind the bin, where you can maybe see this old sort of raised sort of bed container thing, there's patio there as well. Same as this, kill off all the green, jet wash it. It's gonna look a million dollars anyway. Greenhouse beds, what I want to do is around these beds, it does look tatty at the moment, but where the cardboard is, gonna put weed suppressant fabric down there, gonna put some gravel in there, that's gonna tidy all this area up. But what I want to do, and this is what I wanna ask your advice at, is all the way sort of down here, up to the shed, I wanna put a path in here, a single path, all the way up there, so I can take things from here, and the cars, the cars sort of park over that way, over there, to this shed but the problem i have is this we have four or five of these massive lime trees and these have been topped two years ago these were topped so they were much taller than that and they drop loads and loads of leaves all over here so i did i don't want to put slabs down slabs is a is a last resort patio slabs whatever that sort of stuff i, I don't know if i can be bothered to do it all but i was thinking gravel and i thought nice and easy Put it down here, gravel all the way down there. These these four stones that are sort of here, these four slabs that are broken crack, they're gonna get lifted. The gravel will take it all up there, self-leveling, weed fabric down, jobs are good and nice and easy. But is it gonna be a pain when all the leaves fall off these trees and go on top of the gravel? I've then gotta somehow get the leaves off the gravel. I've got a leaf leaf vacuum thing that sucks them all up and shreds them. Is that gonna suck the gravel up? I don't know. Is it going to be a problem? So what do you think? Do you have any ideas of what I can use? What sort of material I can use to make a path down here? I mean, slabs probably are the easiest option, but it's a bit of a squeeze. If I want it in a straight line, I don't think that's quite two foot between where these end and where the greenhouse starts. So it might be a bit of a, a bit of a squeeze. I don't really want to be lifting up one, one row of these to put something down there. So we'll see. What do you think? Anyway, 
let me know in the comments down below what you think and there's a there's an area over here that's got some oh it's a mess i need to sort all that out it'll come though like i say it's not going to be an instant thing I've got all this garden to look after. I've got all the garden over there to look after. I've got the front garden to look after. And I've got 200 square meters of allotment to look after. There's only so much I can do at one time. But there's one thing, one thing I wanted to show you. And it involves a cane. Let me get one of the canes. Let me spin you around here again. So the canes that we were just using, here they are. These are four foot long. And I've discovered this hole. And I just want to use the four foot long cane to show you just how deep this hole is that's going to disappear if i keep pushing that's going to go all the way in there so what sort of creature has created this hole is it a badger is it a fox is it a rabbit what is it what's going to create a hole that big and that deep and there's a matching one and i'm, I'm not going down there but all the way over the other end of the garden there's a matching hole all the way down that end of the garden so we've got that that is about i don't know it's at least four foot deep before it turns or goes somewhere else so who knows what's made it and i'm sure pretty sure look, look he's come he's come to be in a video i'm pretty sure it's not fred the cat who's come to join us today anyway that is me done for today let me know in the comments down below what is it is it badgers is it rabbits is it foxes what is it let me know in the comments about that and the path and i will be eternally grateful thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you on the next one bye for now folks